While it looks and functions similar to a conventional pulse oximeter, it is important to remember that the RAD57 pulse co-oximeter is actually a far more sophisticated piece of equipment. Proper sensor placement is a critical component to accurate SPCO readings. There are several simple but very important steps you must follow for proper rainbow sensor placement. Step 1. Select the appropriately sized sensor for the patient's finger. For adults with average to large sized fingers, use the adult sensor. For patients between 10 and 30 kilograms, and for adults with slender fingers, use the pediatric or small finger sensor. The rainbow sensor should be used on fingers only. Using the rainbow sensor on toes or earlobes, even on pediatric patients, will cause inaccurate readings. Using the non-dominant hand, the following order is preferred. First, the ring finger, then the middle, and finally, the index finger. The finger should be clean and dry. Nail polish should be removed. Step two, hold the sensor in the open position and carefully insert the patient's finger into the sensor until it reaches the digit stop, and then allow the sensor to clamp onto the finger. The digit stop is a small black elevated block located on the bottom of the sensor near the hinge. It is very important that the finger is inserted all the way until it touches the digit stop. Not inserting the finger far enough or inserting the finger too far may result in inaccurate readings. The patient's fingernail may extend over the stop tab. When placing the sensor on the patient's finger, ensure that it's right side up. There is a picture of a finger on the top of the sensor and the cable will run over the top of the patient's hand when applied correctly. It's also important that the sensor is aligned so that it's straight on the finger. If the sensor is crooked, twisted, or angled at all, light can pass around the finger and inaccurate readings are likely. If you remove the sensor from the patient or are screening multiple patients, make sure to close the sensor clip completely for a minimum of five seconds before applying or reapplying the sensor. This will signal to the device that it's in probe off condition and will stop all monitoring activity before beginning a new measurement. If you need to adjust the positioning of the sensor when it's already applied to the patient's finger, remove the sensor completely and reapply. For accurate readings, it's important to take a few extra seconds to ensure that the sensor has been placed correctly on the finger. Step three, shield the sensor in environments with excessive ambient light. Rainbow sensors utilize more than seven wavelengths of light to measure parameters such as SPCO. This includes wavelengths of light in the visible spectrum. That means that if you can see the light, the rainbow sensor could potentially see the light as well if it's not properly shielded. Low intensity light, such as light in the back of an ambulance, light inside of a patient's home, or the average light inside of a building typically will not interfere with the device. However, high intensity light, such as strobe lights, or bright direct sunlight can interfere with the device's ability to calculate an SPCO reading. If you are in an environment with excessive ambient light, for example, screening patients outside in direct sunlight, or running firefighter rehab next to an emergency vehicle with its strobe lights on, it is strongly recommended you shield the sensor. This is the purpose of the ambient light shield. If you are using the bag shield that came with your sensor, Place the sensor on the patient's finger first. Then, place the bag over the sensor and secure it with the Velcro strap. If you've elected to use the rubber boot shield, insert the sensor all the way into the light shield prior to placing it on the patient's finger. The cable should run out of the top of the opening. Once the sensor is in the light shield, Insert the finger into the sensor, making sure that it is properly aligned, and the finger is pushed all the way to the digit stop. If you don't have a light shield available, anything that completely shields the sensor from light will do. This could be a towel, jacket, blanket, pillow, etc. This does not include covering the sensor with your hand. Light can seep in around your fingers and interfere with the calculations. Regardless of the light shield used, be careful that you do not disturb the sensor positioning on the finger when you place the shield. This will likely cause inaccurate readings. So to review, proper rainbow sensor application is achieved by following these simple but extremely important steps. Step 1. Select the appropriately sized sensor for the patient's finger. Step 2. Carefully insert the patient's finger into the sensor until it reaches the digit stop 
and it is properly aligned in the sensor. Step three, shield the sensor in environments with excessive ambient light. For more information about sensor placement and operation, consult the directions for use included with your sensor.